Hi everyone, Brianna Ignard here and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we have talked a little bit about cameras and how they're very similar to microscopes. And today I thought we'd talk a little bit about how film is made and how we develop it using a lot of science. The creation of film all started in a lab. Going back as far as 1727, scientists discovered that if they mixed together certain chemicals and then applied it to the backing of a plate and exposed that plate with those chemicals on it to light, either sunlight or light indoors, some sort of color change would happen because the plates with the chemicals on it had, had become sensitive to light or photosensitive. Photo meaning light and then sensitive, it's, it's photosensitive. In 1899, George Eastman, founder of Kodak Cameras, um, took this a step further and began applying emulsions to very thin plastic bag things, substances, to create what we now know today as the first film. So film is created by applying, like I just said, an emulsion to a kind of plastic backing that is made out of cellulose and acetate. Acetate is a small molecule that is often used as like a food additive, and guess what? It's also a polymer. Science really does love polymers. And then an emulsion is applied to it. So for example, if I take my graham cracker here, would be our cellulose and acetate backing. And if I were to, basically what they do is they apply a mixture of chemicals to the backing and a very thin layer to create film. Here, I'm spreading peanut butter on a graham cracker as my emulsion, but the actual emulsion used for film is a mixture of silver, nitric acid, gelatin, and other compounds that involve some sort either iodine or bromine. These are both halogens, or considered what are called halogens on the periodic table. So the mixture of these iodine or bromine containing compounds with silver creates silver halide crystals. Halide coming from the word halogen. Now silver halide crystals are photosensitive or sensitive to light as I just mentioned before with those chemicals. Because what happens is when you click the shutter open on your camera and are taking a picture in from the outside, a lot of light is pouring into the camera. When the light hits the silver halide crystals on the film, it's turning into, it decomposes and turns into metallic silver and then either like iodine or bromine, whatever that halogen was. It's going back and De creating from silver halide crystals, forming those two products that originally went into the crystal in the first place. Metallic silver has a different optical density than a silver halide. If you remember in my stick sum and anaplastics dress video, I talked a little bit about what optical density is, and that's how much light is allowed to get a, like through something. So silver halide will let a little bit of light through it, but metallic silver will appear solid. Now, these tiny little specks on our film are so small, we can't see them until we develop them. So film, if it's been exposed to light or hasn't been exposed to light, looks very similar because those tiny little conversions from silver halide crystals to metallic silver are very, very tiny. So for example, if I have a picture here, if I'm trying to take a picture of this, when the light is coming through, all of the light portions are going to turn into metallic silver and become darker, and all of the dark portions are going to stay light. And this is kind of why film ends up turning, this is why film turns into a, what is called a negative when you develop it, and I'll discuss more about that in a second. So black, and, simple black and white film is just kind of the, you know, acetate cellulose base with an emulsion of silver halide crystals on the front of it. While color film is a little bit more complicated and it's got other emulsions spread and sandwiched into layers, that will change colors and are receptive or very sensitive to different colors of light. So rather than black and white film, if it's light, it's gonna be white or lighter. If it's dark, it's gonna be black or darker. Color film has other emulsions or chemicals on it that are sensitive to different types of light. So if there's red light coming in, that layer is gonna change, but the other layers for like blue and green are not gonna change and vice versa. So that's a little bit about how film was made, and now we're gonna get into the chemistry of developing our actual film. And to do that, I'm gonna send you guys over to me in our kind of sketchy bathroom, dark room, uh, where we developed some film a couple days ago, and I'm gonna talk you through that process and the science going on there. So time for another science field trip. <laughs> 
Film is so light sensitive that it always has to be kept in the dark. So it's kept in canisters that are dark. We're about to unload it from the canister and put it into that tank. And my husband is currently putting that film into a light blocked bag that is zipped and velcroed so no light can absolutely get into it and within that bag he is going to crack open that film case take the roll of film out and load it into that tank you just saw us put in there that is also light sealed so he's done that and now we're going to be taking out and the roll of film has been rolled up onto a spool which we'll see later when we we'll unroll it later and loaded into a tank this is called a patterson tank it is light sealed Next, we have to start mixing up our chemicals. So there's three different chemicals we're gonna use, and this is kind of a little nice montage of it, and I'll talk about each one at each step. But there is a developer that's all the way on the left. That yellow one in the middle is a stabber bath, and the one that I should be about to be poured is our fixer. So there's a nice little overline of all of the different chemicals that we're gonna use in developer, stopper, fixer order. The first step is pouring in our developer. So that's what's going on right now and peep my uh, father-in-law sitting in the bathtub because that's as much room as we have in the dark room. You can have three people in there if one of them's in the bathtub. Uh, so the developer is gonna take all of those silver halide crystals on the film and turn it into metallic silver. So I did say that exposure to light did this and created little spots of crystals of metallic silver. The developer is gonna make all of those other crystals attached to those little spots metallic silver. It's gonna make them a lot bigger. We only leave the developer on for a certain amount of time because if it was left on for too long, it would turn every single silver halide crystal into silver, even if they actually weren't supposed to be. So each film type has a recommended time and concentration of, stopper de of developer chemical to develop at. Now we are pouring in the stopper. This goes on for about 30 seconds, and it is typically some sort of acidic bath that neutralizes the basic or alkaline developer chemical and stops it from developing too far. So that'd basically be we're stopping it from putting on or turning any more of those silver halide crystals into a metallic silver because it would, if we didn't use a stopper bath, it would have the same effect as leaving on the developer for too long. So, and while this is going on, we agitate, have to agitate and shake the tank every, ten, every minute for 10 seconds. Um, so it's quite a physical process. So now we're pouring out the stopper and we're about to pour in the fixer, which is our last third and last chemical. So here he goes with the fixer. So the fixer is going to remove any remaining silver halides that are still on the film. So silver halides are light sensitive, so if you leave them on your developed film and you take it out of the tank, it's going to get exposed to more light and ruin your negative. So instead of turning your silver halides into silver, that's going to get stuck to your film and just result in no picture whatsoever because everything is silver. The fixer converts them into a molecule that is easily going to be washed away once you rinse your film with water. So here we are dumping out the fixer. So that made your developed negatives no longer sensitive to light. And now we have to put on water to rinse out all of those chemicals and to wash away any of those silver compounds that came out when we applied the fixer. And now we can finally open up that tank because our film is no longer light sensitive and reveal our wonderful roll of film attached to the spool. And in a second here, you're going to hear me being very excited about how it turned out. Go. Oh my god, it did something! Ah! It was like garbage, but it did. So yes, very excited about that. And now we're hanging up the film to dry and using this squeegee to remove excess water that would happen to leave water spots if they dried on there. So you leave this to dry for about 20 minutes and then you're ready to scan it and see how your pictures turned out. So as you can probably tell from the darkroom footage, I was really excited to have developed this roll of film and all of my negatives. Uh, I was shooting this on a camera that I fixed myself that's like 70 years old. I don't know anything about camera settings practically. I know a lot about them theoretically. I was using expired film and we were also kind of using potentially expired chemicals. So the fact that even some frames, oh, and the back of my camera kept falling off for like during the duration of this shooting roll of film. So the fact that I actually have some frames at all is miraculous and I was really excited about it. And even, I will be scanning it and popping it up 
hopefully. Now, that picture I took in my microscope versus camera video at the very beginning turned out too. So in a way, I have a picture of all of you guys watching. So again, I mentioned this earlier, but these are negatives, meaning that what is lighter in the picture is going to appear darker on my negative, and what is darker in the negative is actually gonna appear lighter, and that is because the light changed, again, those silver halide crystals over into metallic silver, which ended up being having a darker optical density. So you can actually scan this using a scanner or a really, um, like a macro lens and a digital camera, and through some photo editing software, flip it. So that's kind of what we're doing and we're working on upgrading our film scanning system. But that's how you develop film, which is super cool science and just wonderful to watch your pictures come to life before your eyes. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about film and film development today. Uh, today's fun fact we're gonna rate is that early films were extremely sensitive to blue objects, which means that blue object appeared very light in old photographs. So if you've ever seen like a picture of an old, like an old picture of a person and their eyes are basically like white or clear, um, they, they didn't have freakishly light eyes. They probably had blue eyes and because of those chemical sensitivities to blue light just turned out looking very, very lightly colored. So please be sure to rate that bleh, fun fact in the comments below. Like this video, share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. I post on every Tuesday and Fridays and keep it sciency. No. Gosh, I'm gonna bite your stuff while I film.